Welcome back to another Ask GMBN Tech. This is our weekly Q&A show, so you guys get to ask the questions and we try and answer them for you. If you want to ask any tech-related questions, there's a link at the bottom of the screen there. You can contact us, and of course, you can add your questions in the comments below. Don't forget to use that hashtag, Ask GMBN Tech. Makes it nice and easy to see which ones are questions and which ones are comments. So first up this week is from Alfie Green. Hi Doddy, I've got a Boardman MTR 8.8, .8. nice bike that actually, and it comes with an FSA Gamma Pro crankset. I want to change the chaining on it to a race face narrow wide, uh, but would I have to change my cranks as well? Um, blah, blah, blah. Um, also, how do I find out my bolt circle on the chain ring? Hi Alfie, okay, so I've had a quick look at that crank set. There's not a lot of information online, but it's a four bolt system on there. So if you want to measure the bolt circle yourself, if you take the cranks off, well actually you can do it while it's on the bike, basically you're measuring just between opposites. So literally you're looking for 104, for example, bolt circle diameter, and that's the fairly common one you see these days. And if so, yours is, that means you will be able to put a race face chaining on there. In order to do that, you obviously need to remove the crank from the bike, and then on the back side of the crank, there will be access to those bolts holding the chainring onto it. You'll need to remove those. They might be five millimeter Allen key head bolts, or they might be Torx T25. It's quite likely that there'll be some thread lock of some kind holding them on, so make sure you use a good fitting tool, um, and be careful just when you undo it in case you slip and skin your knuckles on the actual chainring. So just take care with that, take the chainring off, get that new one, just confirm that the bolt circle is the same, there's obviously various different ones, and you should be good to go. All right, next up. Hi Doddy, my name is Hugo Oliveira, a bike enthusiast from Portugal. I love all the GMBM videos, keep doing it, I love it. Cool, thanks, thanks for that. Um, right, so your question. I have a Cannondale Trail 5 29er and I'm upgrading as I go along, but I'm obviously on a tight budget, as you can see by my current hardtail. I've upgraded the fork from a SR Suntour XCM slash RL 100mm to a budget air fork from Manitou, also 100mm, so yeah, that's a great upgrade to do. The grips to SRAM lock on, etc. bit by bit improving my ride. That is exactly how you do it. The biggest change, I believe, is to upgrade my bottom bracket, which is the square taper and the crank to a better one. Can you tell me, can I go one by eight just by changing the crank or is this a stupid idea? Does it mean that I need to switch the entire group set to like say SRAM GX? Uh, that's the cheapest I can find online. No, you can go straight to one by eight, Hugo, um, but you have to bear in mind a couple of things. So the typical one by transmissions you see at the moment, there are two major factors that make them work. One of them is the narrow wide chain ring up front. The idea with the narrow wide chain rings is those narrow wide teeth profiles match the narrow wide profiles on the inside of the chain links on the male and females. So the idea is the chain can't move around too much on that chain ring and therefore is much, much harder to derail. So that is part of it, but also the clutch on the derailleur. SRAM and Shimano both have their, their individual systems for a clutch. And the reason you need this is basically to increase the tension on the chain. And it basically that works hand in hand with the narrow wide. So your mech won't be a clutch mech. So it does mean you have a couple of options up front. So when you change to a single crank and a new bottom bracket, which will, as you point out, be a very good upgrade to do, I wouldn't focus so much on getting a narrow wide chaining. Okay, so it will definitely help, but you're gonna need to have some kind of compact chain guide, just a minimal upper one. Now, MRP, make one, that's it, right there on the screen. Now, there's various different fittings, whether it's going onto the front mech mount, around the seat tube, or onto ISCG mounts, or even the bottom bracket shell there. And also, E13 make one as well, and they're both very good for the money. They do the job excellently. Now, long before all this one by phase, everyone's in now, the one by 11 and one by 12, I used to run one by eight and one by nine in those days, way before clutch mechs and way before narrow wide chain rings by using one of those MRP one by guides. Loved it, I loved the simplicity, and of course, it doesn't cost you anything because you don't really have to buy a new derailleur, a new shifter, all that stuff. You can just do it by literally going one by and just getting that compact chain guide on the top. So a little bit more money to spend, but you can do it without having to do a whole new transmission. So get it done, in my opinion. I think it will make your bike quieter and you will love it. A uh, hub related question now from Aaron J. Hall. I currently have a 2011 Kona Hey Hey 29er with a broken chainstay. Unlucky. Um, the current chainstay is a quick release with a 2011 Eastern XC 
29er wheel set. I can only replace the chainstay with a newer model, which Kona has told me will fit, but does require a through axle hub. So that's a 142 by 12. Is there a new way to replace or convert to the hub given the age of the wheel, or do I need to purchase a new wheel instead? Thanks for any advice. Um, okay, well first up, I don't know if the back end of that bike is 135 or 142. Um, you might be in luck because those Eastern hubs on those wheels, I think they're EA 70s. So they're very similar to the Havens, which I had in that era. And it's very much a plug and play system. So you can get different caps for 135, 142, through axle and quick release. Now, if you're in luck, which I think you are, yours will just have the quick release caps on the end. You can check this by trying to pull them out. They should be push fit on there, but quite a tough fit. So see if you can pull, pull those out. And if that does come out successfully like that, there will be a spare part from Eastern. They do carry a lot of parts. So I don't know where you're based. If it's in the UK, the distributor is Silverfish. They will be able to help you or at least advise if they haven't got the part, which part you need to order. Failing that, Eastern do tend to have pretty good customer service. So it's definitely worth dropping them a line. So hopefully you can get that sorted and just get the adapters, which I think you can, and continue riding your bike with that new chainstay. Good luck. Got a great one here from Andrew Dobbins. I've been looking at the Schlumpf Mountain Drive, which allows you to convert a one by into a two by by lowering the gear ratio by 2.5 simply by pressing the side of the crank. I haven't seen anyone review this or even discuss it in any detail. I guess there must be some downsides other than the price. Uh, but would have thought mountain bikes would have been all over it. Be interested in your thoughts, Andrew from Chepstow. Um, I have heard of this before, to be honest, Andrew, but I had to check it out because I wasn't too sure of it. And the reason I'd heard of it before is actually they use this on molten bikes and a few other sort of alternative branded bikes. So it's basically a planetary gearing system. So it's got a set of gears and they engage. And on this particular setup by Schlumpf, there has like a, there's a little lever that you just kick with your ankle on the center of the crank. Basically, that engages the overdrive or the, the secondary gear. So... I think it's kind of a good concept, but I do think there are some issues with it, which is why you probably haven't seen this. So A, it's potentially quite heavy, the style system it is. B, it involves having quite a large chainring because of the way the system works. And that chainring is in a central position. And most mountain bikes are designed, even the one bike bikes are designed around a smaller chainring in that middle position. So you're very limited on the bikes that might be able to accept it. You could of course space out the whole crank set um, but it would put your chain line off, so you don't really want to do that. So I'm sure it would work on some bikes, but not on all of them. Now also, the way they're designed is they're supposed to have minimal friction, because of course gearboxes add friction, and planetary gears like those, again, add friction. So these particular ones have minimal sealing on them, basically, so they're not really good in wet weather, they're not good with mud and that, because it's going to get into those gears, and they're not really designed for the conditions. However, they would cope with the torque that we're going to put through them and that sort of stuff. So definitely be keen to have a look at one. But just while we're talking about this, you actually reminded me of a product that was really cool and quite revolutionary at the time, made by Truvative, called the Hammerschmidt. And this was basically the mountain bike version of one of these. Now I know the Schlumpf Drive one, they do say it's a mountain friendly one. I'm sure it could work. You know, um, I'll sit on the fence with that one because I've not tried it. Hammerschmidt was incredible. Now Hammerschmidt, was developed by SRAM in conjunction with Truvative, and it's got a planetary gear system, but it's fully enclosed. It used a tiny chain ring, and it had equivalent of two gearing on there, but a tiny and what felt like quite a significantly bigger chain ring size just by flicking the gear. It had a gear lever, just like the traditional gears we use, so it's not quite as convenient as the system you've just told us with where you kick it, but it had a chain guide built into it, a bash guard built into it, and it was designed to cope with the worst conditions because it was fully sealed. It's a really, really cool product. Quite ahead of its time, to be honest, and a lot of people still talk about Hammerschmidt, but I think really the reason it's not used much on mountain bikes was simply it had too much friction. Now, I forget in which mode, whether the standard or the overdrive mode, but you definitely notice you change that gear. You could feel the friction because you're turning all those extra planetary gears around on the inside. So whilst it was a fantastic idea and it was made like a phenomenal piece of kit, it just wasn't that successful, unfortunately. I'm gonna try and get a hold of one for Truvative to show you on another show because it's such a cool bit of kit. Um, I just wanna show you how they work. They're really cool when you take them apart. But, um, but there you go. I think that's the reason why we've not seen them. Okay, another one, a nice simple one actually from Gregor Kolovsky. 
Um, hi, I have a problem. When I move my wheel from left to right and holding the frame, I hear a sort of knocking. I think that could be something from the rear hub. Can you tell me how to fix it? Thanks a lot. Uh, well, firstly, you do need to identify specifically what it is. There's a whole bunch of things that it could be, but of course it does suggest that it might be the hub being loose. Now, your hub will be one of two options. It will either have traditional cup and cone style bearings or it will have cartridge bearings. If it's traditional cup and cone ones, you can adjust those. There's basically, you can adjust the cone and then have a lock nut that adjusts against the cone to stop it basically coming loose. And it sounds like if it is, it has come loose. So you'll need to readjust those and re-lock re that. They normally take sort of 15 to 17 millimeter cone spanners, which are the really thin options, especially for that job. But you can often get away with doing this with adjustable spanners or just regular spanners. If yours is a cartridge bearing, it's one of two things. Either the bearing itself is worn out and that's why it's knocking and moving around, in which case they'll need replacing. Uh, it's a fairly easy job to do. It does vary on hubs how you get those bearings out and you punch them back in again. Uh, if you're unsure about that, your bike shop will be able to help you. Uh, but it also could be that those bearings aren't preloaded. Now, there's often confusion with preloading cartridge bearings because you're not actually loading the bearing because it's a sealed unit. But what the term preloading it means is making sure the hardware is snug up against it so there is no movement. And if any of that is loose, then you will have that movement which translates to a wobbly wheel. So there's a few options of things it could be there. Um, you really have to try and identify it yourself before we can figure out any more. But I think that's gonna help you along the way. So good luck with that. Um, now this one, I can't tell if this is a real name or if Blake is playing a prank on me, but this is from Dick Splats 007. Um, where did you get the 10 mil reach stem from in the cutscene for GMBN? I've searched everywhere. Mondraker don't even do them anymore. Uh, I got it with my Mondraker, basically. Uh, yeah, they don't do them in 10 anymore. I've got the 10, I've got the 20, and then of course I've got the regular 30s, 35s and all the other ones. And I've got a few different options of those. I've ridden a lot of their bikes in the past. I was an early adopter of that 10 mil system when other people thought it looked a bit strange and even ugly. Um, you should still be able to find them, track them down. Um, I'll tell you what, drop me an email, I might be able to help you on that one. So drop an email to hello tech at gmbn.com and in the subject line do the Mondraker 10 mil stem and hopefully I'll get to see that email and I'll see if I can hook you up. So there we go, there's another GMBN tech Q&A session in the bag. If you've got any questions, send them into the email address that was on the screen at the bottom of the page at the beginning of the show and if not, add them in the comments below. Just use that hashtag AskGMBNTech and we can always find them. For a couple of great videos, click down here for everything about derailleurs. This is our essentials video that tells you how they work, what the adjustments do and what to do when yours go out of adjustment. For another video, click up here for the Bike Build Pro Bike. That's got all the details of how you can win it. So you definitely want to watch that. And I want you all to enter the competition because someone's got to win it and they're going to win it soon. So get those entries in. As always, give us a thumbs up if you like the video and make sure you subscribe to the channel. We're nearly at 100K now.